Hello, hello! It's Julie Davison from juliedavison.com, Julie's Stamping Spot. Welcome to Thursday Night Stamp Therapy. I'm so excited you're here! We missed last Thursday night and did it during the day a little bit early because I was attending Stampin' Up's on stage recognition event and I was so excited to find out that I was number 48 on the Global 100 list out of 60,000 demonstrators around the world. I was number 48. That is based on personal sales, team building, and leadership, and I also placed in the top 50 in those same categories in the United States. Overall, in the U.S., I was number 30 out of 30-something thousand demonstrators, so I was so excited. It was such a fun event. I know there's many demonstrators watching, so if you attended on stage, give me a woohoo or a heart or a thumbs up. We got to see the brand new mini catalog that is coming out in January. I did another video that I posted the link to last night and I will share the link in the description of this video when I'm done. So if you haven't seen my video with the sneak peeks, be sure to check it out. But that's what On Stage was all about. We got sneak peeks, we got demonstrations, we got some business training, we got door prizes. We had so much fun. So if you have ever thought about being a demonstrator, now is a great time and I would love to have you join my team. If you join my team right now, you'll be able to see the January through June catalog right now. You'll have instant access to the PDF and you'll be able to pre-order with us. You can get anything out of the catalog on December 1st and during the whole month of December, a whole month before the catalog comes out for everybody else. Yay! Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> well, I'm excited today to share with you some fun Christmas projects. We're going to focus on Christmas um, because I feel like it's sneaking up on us. Like the whole time we've been doing Christmas in July and August, it felt so early and all of a sudden it's November and almost the middle of November. And I feel like we are running out of time. It is time to do our Christmas crafting. Are you guys all done with your Christmas cards? I just launched my Christmas 2020 Stamp a Stack at Home card kit. I've so missed doing in-person classes, and um, I had a lot of people that would get the to-go kit. So this is sort of a takeout version of my Christmas card class that I do every year. So there's eight different card designs. You can get one. Um, you'll get one of each of the eight designs. So you'll get eight, <laughs> eight cards total. Why is this not coming out right? Eight cards total with envelopes that are pre-cut and ready for you to stamp and customize at home. So you'll need your own stamps and ink and paper and adhesive, not paper, stamps and ink and adhesive. All the paper will be pre-cut and ready to go. If you don't have the same stamp sets, you can easily substitute. So I only have a limited number of card kits though. So um, I've already sold I think about half of what I have prepared and ready to go. If you purchase they're going to go out in the mail right away within 24 hours. Um, and so if you want to get one of these Christmas card kits go to tinyurl.com slash Christmas cards 2020. Use the capital letters. I'm not sure if it makes a difference, but um, Christmas Cards 2020, tiny URL, and that's going to get you to the PayPal button where you can buy your card kit. And like I said, I only have a limited number of available, so don't wait. Okay, so the other thing I'm super excited about that I worked on over the weekend is this advent calendar. I used the Memories and More card. Oh gosh, what is this one called? Ah! It's the. Uh, da -da -ba -da -ba -da. I gotta get my thing out. I meant to write it down and look it up, and I, I want to say one, yeah, wonder of the season. So memories and more card packs. So it's back here, and then the cards and envelopes. So I worked on this over the weekend, and I created an advent calendar. In the cards and in the memories and more cards and envelopes, there are sticker die cuts. And there's numbers, so 1 through 25. There's also some other sticker die cuts. And then these are like for pocket, memory keeping, card making. 
and more. <laughs> so um, you can do all kinds of things. Oh my gosh, I love this card. That one's my favorite. So there's big cards that are four by six. There's small cards that are four by three and you get all different kinds. So I used the cards and I created an advent calendar on this Ikea frame and the little jump rings. I got to get one that's a little bit smaller. So I'm going to do a kit that will include all the pictures and instructions to make the countdown calendar, the memories and more cards that you'll need to put on the countdown calendar, and then some cards and envelopes. And these are really slick because you can take the small cards and you can add it right there. Boom, have an instant card. You can dress it up if you want with some rhinestones. And then look how beautiful those envelopes are with the red foil accents. So I am still putting together the sign up form for this, but watch for it in the next couple days because I want to make sure I get this kit out to you before the end of November so that you can make your countdown calendar, your advent calendar, and be ready for December because December is only a few weeks away. These big cards will fit on there just perfectly. They cover up the the border, but they are designed so that they'll fit just perfectly on these cards. So you'll get in the kit, you'll get the, um, you'll get the cards and envelopes, which I only used half of the cards, memories and more card pack. I only used half of the pack to create the calendar and then you'll have the other half to make Christmas cards with, with the cards and envelopes. So you'll be making all kinds of Christmas projects with this kit. So watch for information about this. I will be posting on my blog and the Facebook page. Um, and yeah, the blog and the Facebook page. Watch for information there and the sign up form. Like I said, I'll be opening that up in the next um, in the next few days. So if you're interested in that, um, if you leave a comment, then I'll try to remember to um, reach out to you specifically and make sure that you have the link. So let me know if you're interested in that and I'll make sure to send it to you. Oh my God, deep breath, stop. <laughs> I feel like I'm just, oh my goodness. Okay. Hi guys. Oh, I'm so glad you like the card, card kit or the kit. Bleh. I really am <laughs> in rare form tonight. All right. Well, right now I'm going to share a couple different card designs with you using the new curvy celebrations. This is an exclusive early release that, um, is going on right now in November and December. So um, you may have seen me post about this already. The one bundle, quite curvy, is coming out in the mini catalog, but you can get it now. So you have a stamp set and coordinating dies, and then the curvy Christmas stamp set is exclusive to this promotion and only available in November and December. December. So I'm going to show you two cards tonight using this stamp set. Then the other thing we have is this classic Christmas 6x6 designer paper. And this is, let me show you, where did it go? Here it is. This is um, 6x6 in three different colors. We have shaded spruce, cherry cobbler, and Sahara sand. And all of these are double-sided patterns. So they're um, there are three different double-sided patterns in each of the three colors. So really versatile for making Christmas cards. But I use some of these papers, especially the Sahara Sand, to make other cards that weren't necessarily just for Christmas. So I'm going to start by showing you some of the swaps that I got using all of these products. Um, and then we're going to get into making the two cards. And then after we make those two cards, we're going to do our mystery stamping. I forgot to copy the supply list in the description. Hopefully you guys saw my post. Um, and hopefully you'll stamp along with me. And if not, while I'm live, then, um, maybe you'll come back and stamp along with me afterwards. So let me show you these card samples using the curvy celebrations. Um, I have a group of demonstrators that I do a one-on-one -on -one swap. So I send them a card, they send me a card. And so we we did a little swap for the Curvy Celebrations. Can you guys see, is the plastic... Oh, hmm. I feel like the plastic is having too much of a shadow. Well, I'll try to hold them. Okay, so this first one is by Dina Rikau, and she used the Curvy Christmas. Oh my gosh. I think that plastic is too much. There we go. You can see that's so much better. Next card is by Ruth Bingle. 
You can see she used the curvy die here. This is a card that I made. I think we did a panel card like this before. These strips are one inch by three inch. And so I used one of each color in different patterns. And then these don't have dies. I just hand cut those images from the curvy Christmas stamp set. This one is by Tracy Jacobs. Love the her color combination here of the um, Seaside Spray and Night of Navy. And then my upline, Kim Peck, made this card using the same combination, Misty Moonlight and Seaside Spray. And then these little polar bears are from that um, the Snow Globe stamp set has coordinating dies. So the polar bears came out of that. Um, the snowflake paper is from the Trimming the Town in the mini catalog. And then we've got the curvy dies that created the hills. I love, love, love this card. Isn't it so cute? Here's a card by Sandy Carlson using some of the designer paper and these curvy trees. Let me show you the stamps that we're using here. So here's the stamp set. So it has several dies that are curvy. Even the sentiments are a little bit curvy. And then it's got some foliage and the bow and then some stars and like little snow and snowflakes so this is similar to the card i did here except these aren't cut out they're just stamped this one is by barb mulliken and then here's a simple card that i made just a piece of cardstock right across so you don't have to have the curvy dies um, to make cards with a stamp set so one of the cards i'm going to show you today does not use the dies and one of them does um, Unfortunately, the only way to get the dies is when you get the curvy, quite curvy bundle. So you can't get the dies by themselves, but you can get everything all together. So the variety bundle includes curvy Christmas, the designer paper, and the quite curvy um, bundle with this stamp set and the dies. So the whole thing in the U.S. is $70.50, and you can get that in my online store at juliedavison.com slash shop. All right, moving on. This one is by Kelly Atchison, and she used the curvy dies and then um, stamped the trees kind of in the middle. Little, little uh, rhinestone here. This is almost identical, isn't it? <laughs> this one's by Kay Kaltoff, and she's different colors, but it's, a, it's so amazing, I think, how just a different color scheme can, like, totally change the card. So do you like the blues and the purples, or Sahara Sand, red and green? That was a similar question to the one I posted on Facebook before we got started. I'm, I had two different options for you guys to choose for the paper I'm going to use, and one of them was traditional red and green, and one of them was blue blue snowflakes. Here's one by Celine Kempton and she used that branch to create like half a Christmas tree and then added some ornaments. This one's by Leanne Greff and she used a rectangular postage punch to punch the designer paper and did the trees here at the bottom. So no dies on this card. Here's one that I did. I was doing something else and I had some extra pieces and, and I really love the way this turned out with the, the stars and um and then the star stamp here fills in the big star on the swirl. So I kind of did that with the green Merry Christmas. Here's a card that I made using, oh, I think, are we doing quite curvy? No, yep, I think we're switching stamp sets now. Quite curvy. Okay, so this one is the one that's in the mini catalog, the January through June mini catalog. And we've got some flowers and leaves and curvy sentiments again. So they do coordinate with the dies. This has a die that cuts it out. The birds have a die that cuts it out and the flowers as well. So I use the classic Christmas designer paper to punch the heart and then punch the border at the bottom as well. This one was inspired by a card that my mom made and she used the hearts and had the border on the side. And um, I, I thought it was so clever to get out the heart punch with this um, paper. And so I added the, the flowers and sort of switched the orientation of the card. I love this one. This one is by Natalie Travis, and she used the stars from the Christmas set with your one in a million from the Quite Curvy set. I just thought this was so clean and classic. I love the curvy border with a little bit of the cherry cobbler designer paper peeking out from the side. Uh, here's a card using the stars again from the Christmas set and hooray for you. Love the colors here. Magenta, um, Gorgeous Grape, and um, Bermuda Bay or Coastal Cabana probably. Kate Cogbill made this card. 
Look at this gorgeous one. This is by PJ Peters, and she's got all the different um, colors and leaves. I swear I've got a tree out back that is just like this. Like, <laughs> some of the leaves are yellow and green, and some of them are yellow, and some of them are red and turning brown. Like, and this is, this is well, now all the leaves, I think, just fell, <laughs> they just fell off the tree. My son went out there, and he... Um, we use a mulching mower and so he mulched all the leaves and mowed the lawn and then seriously like overnight an entire tree just shed all of its all of its leaves and he had to go back out there again um so that has been the last couple of days here in central illinois all the leaves are just dropping just like that they're gone anyway gorgeous card the plaid here is not in this classic christmas pack it's from the plaid tidings designer paper in the mini catalog um, here is one by Angie Leach, and she is um, using the Sahara sandpaper up here and then coloring the little birds. There's three different little birdies here, and you know, you know I don't love to color, but I'm, I'm coming around. <laughs> I've been playing a little bit more with the blends and making it happen. Oh, such a pretty card. So the last three are cards that I made, and you can tell I was digging the same color scheme. So I've got Calypso Coral, Old Olive, and um, and then the Sahara Sand. And so I um, I colored the bird with the blends, and this one I just color I stamped on old in Old Olive ink on Old Olive cardstock, and then die cut it. So really simple. Love the way that one turned out. Here's another one with the flowers and some simple banners, but this, all these Sahara sand papers come from that classic Christmas pack. And then this last one, I did two curvy borders with the paper underneath and a little bit of coloring on the bird. So the first card that we're going to make with the curvy Christmas is going to use some of these curvy dies. So let me put these away. I hope that you enjoyed all those swap cards. I I was really inspired by them because I have to say when I first saw the stamp sets, I kind of was feeling a little bit stumped and I wasn't really loving them. But the more I play with it and the more I see, oh my goodness. In fact, I worked with some demonstrators to come up with some special PDF collections and I'm going to send these to all of my team. And then if you purchase one of the stamp sets, the either the Quite Curvy or the Curvy Christmas, I will send you the coordinating PDF. So I have 12 projects in each PDF. Um, that has the measurements and photos and, and instructions to make those projects. So um, if you get those from me, then you'll get the PDF. Uh, I'm, I'm still putting the final name touches on it. So if you've already ordered from me, um, watch for it in the next couple of days. I'll be sending it over email. Um, and so these products are available in November and December. So you have some time, but the, the Christmas one especially, I think it might be while supplies last. So don't wait. If you're thinking about ordering that one, get it right away. And you can get them in my online store at juliedavison.com slash shop. So the first card that we're going to make um, is using the curvy Christmas stamp set. I really was inspired by some of the swaps. And so I kind of did something similar that I saw in the cards and I wanted to have um, two curvy pieces with the designer paper kind of peeking um, underneath. Oh, I just put my finger right in that ink pad. Okay, so we're going to stamp the trees near the top. I'm using shaded spruce which is the same color as the cardstock and designer paper. And I just noticed that I didn't trim the designer paper. So the white piece here is three inches by five and a quarter, and the designer paper is um, two inches by five and a quarter. Okay, so I've got that. Now we're going to use the coordinating dies. I shouldn't say coordinating because they, they don't necessarily coordinate but the curve is the same. I guess that makes it coordinating. Never mind. They coordinate, <laughs> but they're not, they're not available together. So I'm going to use the stamp and cut and emboss machine and cut this. Now we've got one cutting edge here, um, and the dots are above the cutting edge. So I'm going to line it up with the stamp and then run it through the stamp and cut and emboss machine. So let me just get this out. 
I think I gave you guys an update last time, but the mini machine is, um, it's still having some delays with the manufacturer. So it's not quite available yet. And it doesn't look like it's going to be available before the end of the year. Um, so keep, keep holding out. It's coming. Um, I can't wait. I haven't seen it in person, so I really don't have a sense of how big it is, but I love this one so much. So I know I'm going to love the little one too. All right. So I sent that through. Either way, and we want to keep both of these pieces. So we have the piece with the dots, and then we also have the piece that it cut. That's why I had my piece be so big because I wanted to have two pieces. I better put this away before I lose it. These skinny little dies always seem to have a way of disappearing. <laughs> okay, so I have this piece, I'm going to put it in the middle of my card. And this is shaded spruce cardstock, so I'm going to center it here. There is a little bit of a border on either side. And then um, the bottom piece is going to go here and the top piece right here. And before I put this on, I'm going to add the Merry Christmas. And I want these to have a little bit of dimension because this is kind of a simple card. I, um, I want to have it pop up a little bit. So I'm going to use some Stampin' Dimensionals. And I want to make sure that the entire thing is, is elevated and it's not falling at all. So I know <laughs> I'm using a lot of Stampin' Dimensionals, but I think it's important for a card like this for um, these layers to be well supported. So this is going to go at the bottom. This is such a simple card. You could make a bunch of these if you send a lot of Christmas cards. Do you guys send a lot of Christmas cards? Um, I send, I send, I think about 120 to family and friends. And then I send cards to my team members and my customers as well around Christmas. So I'd send quite a few cards. Stephanie, the mystery card is a little stamp a stack. I forgot to include the um I forgot to include the measurements in the in the description, but we'll be doing that at the end of the video. And you prepare your own card stock and designer paper and stamps. And um and then I walk through the project and then you can create it either at the same time or later on and follow along. And all of our projects are the same, except a little bit different because we're using all different paper and stamps. Um, <laughs> Deanna, 120. Uh, I think that's about right. Um, uh, honestly, for family and friends, we do photo cards. So actually, I actually already got them printed. We had some really great family pictures taken. And um, I, one year, sent handmade cards to everybody. And it was like 250 cards. It was a lot. <laughs> um, but 120, I think that's I think that's about right. Every every year I try to pair a few people off, but it's hard. I want everybody to uh to have an update and to to send to send a sentiment. You haven't missed it yet, Stephanie. Um Patricia sends about a hundred cards. See, so I'm not the only one. Um no, yes, this is not the mystery stamping yet. We will do it at the end. So this is the first of two cards, and then we're going to do the mystery stamping. Okay, so I know this is kind of plain. Um, I thought that I would dress it up just a little bit. I added some of the, um, the self-adhesive snowflakes. They've gone missing on my desk. These are in the mini catalog. And I love that they already have adhesive on them. So you can just pick them up and stick them to your card. So just a little bit of, a little bit of bling to dress up the card a little bit. You could add some ribbon or twine, um, but sometimes I think when you're making cards to send through the mail, you really don't want to add a lot of bulk. So this is a very 
good card for popping in the mail. Very easy. Do you guys like it? What do you think? Um, sorry, I was trying to, trying to see a comment there. Okay, let's do another card. This one, I wanted to make a card that did not require the use of the dies because the Curvy Christmas stamp set is available on its own. So I wanted to show you a card that you could make without having the dies because the concept of this is really cool with the curvy dies. But if you don't have a, a die cutting machine or if you don't want to get the whole shebang, then this is a little difficult. Although I have to say that I think you could stamp and hand cut. Like it wouldn't be perfect, but... Let's just do like a quick test and see how, because you have this stamped line, I think that kind of makes it a little easier to know where to cut. So you could make this card without having, um, without having a die cutting machine. You wouldn't have the little holes, but you could follow along with the scissors and still get the curve. It's actually not as bad as I thought it was going to be. So it's not as smooth and clean, but you could totally do that with scissors. Okay, I take that back. <laughs> Again, you wouldn't have the cute little dots, but this card you definitely don't need any dies for. So in this one, I'm going to use this stamp. One of the samples that Stampin' Up! Um, created for us to have as inspiration used this stamp to make a wreath and so I was trying to recreate that card and mine's a little bit different because again I didn't want to use any of the um any of the dies now for this one I feel like it's a little big and you'll see what I mean um when I show you the finished sample you could probably get away with using a smaller a smaller piece if you wanted a smaller wreath but what I did was I started um, with the four sides so I took the stamps and I stamped each one along the edge and then again at the top I guess it's not the top it's the side and you have sort of a boxy wreath but then we're gonna go back and we're gonna stamp kind of like in the corner so we're going to bridge the two together now I realize that you could make a card like this and be exact with the Stamparatus but this card I really wanted to make something that you wouldn't need big fancy tools and you wouldn't like you could just make this very simply so this is sort of the very simple version and you can still see it I got my circle and it looks good I think um so you don't need to have the stamparatus you can stamp yeah <laughs> technically guys I'm just lazy um about getting my stamparatus out and getting it all figured out and I'd rather just it. Now these little dots also come in the Curvy Christmas set. So I'm using Cherry Cobbler ink and adding, adding some dots around the wreath. Again, really quick and easy. Look how quick and easy that was. We're going to center this in the card and then we're going to add um, some banners. So I have um, some of the Curvy or the Classic Christmas paper and then a bit of Sahara sand cardstock and I like you guys know I like my um, tailored tag punch this is what I like to use to cut my banners so I'm going to do that these are about three quarters of an inch wide um, and then what is that like three oh three inches ish so I'm going to glue them together and sort of have them be like a little off center and let's let's glue this one down on the card base right in the middle so you can see like the wreath is kind of big I should have tried doing a smaller piece to see if it would be just the same but I think we fill it out okay so then this is gonna go on the card kind 
kind of at the top. And I'm going to just trim this off. And then to dress this up, I, I took out this ribbon pack from the mini catalog. It goes with the Trimming the Town suite. And so I, I used Old Olive instead of Shaded Spruce so that you'd be able to see the berries a little bit. It wouldn't be so dark. Uh, plus, I wanted to use some coordinating ribbon. So I've got this ribbon from that Trimming the Town pack, and I'm going to tie a bow and put it on the card to finish it off and dress it up a little bit. Um, there's our glue dots. All right, so here's our card. Curvy Christmas without the dies and Curvy Christmas with the dies. Which one do you like better? Would you make the wreath card? Maybe these are both too simple. Oh, you guys know I'm a simple a simple stamper. I I think they're both kind of special and fun and really easy to duplicate. So leave me a comment. Let me know. Um, you like this one, Eva? Would you make that? I'd like to know if you um, which one you like better, but also which one do, could you see yourself making? I clean my stamp here really quick. And then we're going to get started with our mystery stamping. Okay. I'm trying to clean up my space a little bit so that we've got room for everything. All right, let's see. Janet says both. Jean says the wreath. Becky says the wreath. Margo likes the wreath. Trina likes the wreath. Yolanda says both. And Sylvia does too. Myrtle likes the wreath. Deanna says both. Robin says the red one, the wreath. Yay! I'm so glad you like these cards. I really like the way that the wreath turned out. And um, I almost wasn't going to show it. I was, <laughs> I was making it right at the last second, but um, I thought it was fun. So I'm having fun with these curvy celebration um, sets. And like I said, if you purchase either one from me, the curvy celebration or curvy Christmas or quite curvy, then I'll send you the PDF so that you'll have even more ideas and inspiration using, um, using this fun set. All right. Are you guys ready for some mystery stamping? I forgot to print and I forgot to include the list. So let's bring in um, the supplies. Now I did a little vote before we got started and the last time I counted, which was 10 minutes before we started, the snowflakes won by 23 to 13. So they won by 10. So here's what you're gonna need. If you're stamping along with me, you're going to need four five and a half by eight and a half card bases. You're going to need one six by six piece of DSP. Did I, I wonder if I forgot to include this. You can always add it later. Four pieces of four by five and a quarter white. This is just to go on the inside of the card. So if you, if I left it off the list and you don't have it ready, don't worry, you can add it later. And then four pieces that are two and three quarter inches by four and a quarter. And so that's what these are. So you want to, I used an embossing folder. You could have them just be plain cardstock if you want. Now these are, um, this makes up half a sheet of cardstock. So I like this size when I'm cutting because it just cuts so nice and evenly. So eight and a half by five and a half cut into four pieces is four and a quarter by two and three quarter inches. Okay, so I use the uh, winter snow embossing folder. And then um, you wanna have some tags. I did a two inch circle punch and um, some images. So I die cut and stamped some snowflakes ahead of time. This is the Snowflake Wishes stamp set. 
and I'm using Balmy Blue and Pacific Point. And the Snowflake Wishes has coordinating dies, so that's what I used um, to die cut the snowflakes. So are you guys ready to do some stamping with me? You're also going to need a paper trimmer because I'm going to show you how to cut the designer paper. And I just realized I meant to draw a template for cutting and I didn't get a chance to. So I'll have to add that when I post all of this. I'll add a template, but it's really easy and I'm going to walk you through it. So grab your paper trimmer and let's start with cutting the designer paper. Okay, now my designer paper is non-directional. That means that no matter which way you put it, there's no direction to the images. If you have paper that is directional, meaning there's one side that should be up, then you want to have that side, like you want that design to be facing up um, with that at the top of your paper trimmer. Okay, so this way, this way up. We're going to line up at four inches and cut, I forgot for a minute what we were doing. <laughs> You're gonna make one cut. So you've got a, a two inch piece over here and the four inch piece. And you're going to rotate the four inch piece and you're going to cut um, into one and a half inch strips. So we're gonna cut one and a half, one and a half, <laughs> I just realized that my paper wasn't six by six because I should have a whole one and a half left. <laughs> of course. Oh my goodness. Why can't I have a good example to show you? I did this last time. I think I messed up. So let me make sure my paper is right. Six inches <laughs> by six inches. Okay, guys. I'm going to do that again because my paper was the wrong size. Six by six. Okay. You're going to put the design face up at the top four inches and cut. Okay. You, if you had a six by six paper, you are not doing it wrong. So you don't have to redo anything. <laughs> then you're going to turn it and you're going to cut at one and a half and one and a half and one and a half. So th this is what you should have. You should have four pieces that are four inches by one and a half. Okay. Then you're going to take the leftover piece and you're going to cut it down to five and a quarter. And this piece we're just going to throw out. We don't need it for anything. Um, and then you're going to turn it back this way and you're going to cut into half inch strips. So you're going to have one, two, three, four. Okay. So your six by six paper should now be cut into eight, technically nine pieces. <laughs> and this is, this is what we cut. You guys following along okay? <laughs> it's a cute, it's a little pen. I don't know where I got it. I think my sister gave it to me and it's just kind of got like a fun little bunny camera top on there. I lost the, the, um, it has a lid. I left it in my, I think it's in my pencil mug. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to keep up with the with the comments. All right. I think you guys should hopefully be with me. So, uh, we're going to toss out this piece cause we don't want that. Um, and we're going to start with the skinny pieces. And if I, if I forgot to tell you about the whisper white cardstock, it's not a problem. You can add this later. These are just going to be on the inside of your card. Um, this is especially important if you have a dark card base, um, you want to have a, a lighter color inside so that you can write on it and your um, the person you're giving the card to will be able to read it. So um, just a little bit of adhesive um, at the bottom and we're going to stick this on. Now if you had directional paper 
Um, and your design cannot go across, like it doesn't look right that way. The other thing that you can do is um, you can put it this way on your card and cut it. So if, if it doesn't fit, um, you are, it, it, not if it doesn't fit, but if, if it's the wrong direction to go across, then um, that's a way that you can still use that little strip of designer paper. I love carrying the designer paper into the inside of the card. I think it just dresses it up and makes it really cute inside. Oh, do you think it's a TV? I don't know. I think it's a camera because that's the lens and then there's the, the little window. I don't know. My TVs don't have a circle screen. <laughs> okay, so because this is the inside, I'm just going to go ahead and stamp my inside words. So if you have inside words or inside um, sentiments that you want to... Um, use you can stamp those on the whisper white and doesn't that just look so cute with the paper at the bottom this is pacific point which is the darker blue in the paper okay so those are all ready to go on the inside and i'm just gonna set them aside while we have the ink pad open i'm going to stamp the words on the tags. So I'm using a two inch circle pen. So you might have a different um, different stamp. You might have an image or words. Thanks so much. And I'm using the same. Oh, I remember what I was gonna do. I, I, got, I left a stamp out to stamp some snowflakes. So maybe I'll just go ahead and do that. Add some snowflakes while you guys are stamping. Oh, that looks so cute. I love that. Okay, so that's for the inside. I just added the snowflake stamps. Now we're going to layer the outside. So all four of these cards are going to be the same. I find that, especially for Christmas cards, um, I'm sending a lot, and I'm sure you guys are too. So making four of the same design is not um, not a bad thing. Um, and so being able to make multiple cards quickly, I think, is important. I often send, well, I send a lot of thank you cards for my customers who order from me, but I also send a lot of birthday cards to all my team members. Um, and so if you're sending, really for any occasion, the people who get your card aren't going to know that other people got the same design. Okay, so we're going to start with the embossed cardstock, and we're going to put that on the right side about an inch from maybe an inch and a quarter from the edge and then the designer paper is going to go across this way you guys know how much I love layouts so this is a really easy layout that's going to work with different designer paper and different embossing folders and you can use it again and again and again for many different occasions now you might have some different stamped images you might have like the big snowflakes that I have, maybe you just have one or none, that's totally fine. You could just have the sentiment on here um, and create a really simple card, maybe some ribbon or some snowflake embellishments. I do have these little die cuts, so I'm gonna add them and then I'm gonna do the snowflake um, on dimensionals. So I'm gonna put these on with glue dots what kind of paper did you guys choose for your cards tonight? Did you choose Christmas paper? Or are you making Thanksgiving cards? It's We still have time to send Thanksgiving cards out. I don't usually send Thanksgiving cards, but we're not going to see family this year at all. So um, this, I think, is a good year to send Thanksgiving cards and let everybody know that we're thinking about them. So I think I'm gonna add that to my list. Oh my goodness gracious, I just realized 
I just remembered. It's my niece's birthday, and I need to call her and sing. I gotta set. I gotta make myself a note. <laughs> um. Okay. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot. Um, I'm feeling like I need some ribbons. So hold on a second. Let's pull out some of the coordinating. This is the, what's it called? Um, Snowflake Splendor ribbon. And I just love, like, it's so iridescent and pretty. Uh, <laughs> I don't plan this, I swear. But every time we do a video, I, oh, I always tear apart a card. All right, now those tore off, but we're going to cover it back up anyway, so it's okay. All right. So I think it just needs a little, a little bit of sparkle back here. So sometimes when I have ribbon like this, I use a piece of tear and tape to tape it down. Instead of trying to use regular adhesive that sometimes doesn't hold. So I'm going to put this across here, tape it down, and then cover it up with... Oh yeah, I love it! What do you think? Oh, Sue's using Dandy Garden. That's the new stuff. Andrea's using plaid and doing fall cards. Oh, I can't wait to see. So you guys are going to have to share your cards. Go over to the Julie's Stamping Spot Share and Connect group. And um, be sure to share your cards. I can't wait to see what they look like. Um, because even though we're all using the same elements, all the cards are going to be different depending on the, um, the stamp set and the images and the colors that you use and so all of our cards will be unique and different and even using the same layout you can you know um, customize each card and make it a little bit different so they don't all have to be the same um, I know we've talked about this before I don't mind making cards that are the same but I know sometimes you guys like to make them unique and special gosh I feel like <laughs> I just want to keep going don't you feel like maybe we need to add some some more sparkle to this? Since I had them already out on the table. Yes. Oh my gosh. So pretty. Okay, I'm not ready for it to snow. And um, I don't think we're going to get snow anytime soon. It did get colder. But I do love, I do love snowflakes. All right, so there's one, and I'm just going to glue down the other pieces to make the same card. So, I'm sorry if this is boring. I'll try to be quick. I did prepare another set, and I had hoped to um, stamp and make up those cards before um, the live, but I just kind of ran out of time. So maybe I'll switch to that and show you the other the other card design that I was cooking up. Whenever I stamp lots of cards, this is kind of how I do it. Like I, I do assembly line. So I create all the pieces, like I did all the backgrounds. I did all the snowflakes earlier and then um, I assemble them. So I do one thing at a time, all, this, all the snowflakes, then all the sentiments, then all the insides, then, um, you know, all the, all the pieces, and that makes it go so much faster. So once I do the first one, and especially after I figure out how I want to customize it, then the rest of them come together a lot faster. I almost feel like we should time me. Like, <laughs> how, how fast can I make these last three cards. Did we do that once? Did we do a timed stamp? <laughs> I feel like we did. Maybe it was like memories and more cards or something. And I was saying, how fast can I make 20 cards? I don't remember what we did. This is a little bit different, but um, kind of the same. And 
and it's totally cheating since all the elements are done. It's just assembling. Are you guys fast stampers, slow stampers? Do you like to just take your time? I have some speedy stampers that come to my stamp club. <laughs> and um, I try to make sure that I'm not going too fast so that everybody can keep up. But um, some of them like to just go for it. Oh, there we go. Number two. <laughs> Danny, you're not that slow. Oh, <laughs> Becky's timing me. <laughs> now, now I gotta, now I gotta, uh, <laughs> I gotta really rush. Um, uh, you know, honestly, when I'm designing cards, I do take my time. Like, it takes me so long to design one card, I feel like, sometimes. Um, and then once I figure that out, then stamping, like, stamping it again or stamping multiples is not, um, not as time-consuming. But I spend hours sometimes designing <laughs> just a couple cards. It's almost embarrassing how slow I am at designing cards. Sometimes, like, there's just, there's no mojo. And other times... The force is strong. When I was making cards with the new mini catalog, ooh, I should show you some of those samples. Um, I just really was like on a roll and I just kept going. It was awesome. I made 40 cards and some of them were using the double wonder template, but I still made like three, um, two or three with every stamp set. So there was tons of variety and they turned out so cute. One more. <laughs> now I can't even talk and stamp at the same time. Oh. Yes, I, I do feel like I'm thoughtful with my ideas, Patricia. The other thing, and I figured this out just recently. I don't know why it's taken me 18 years to figure this out, but I, um, I'm an editor by trade and at heart. And, um, and I mean that like words, editing words. So I'm an English major and in my former life, before I was a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I was an editorial assistant and then I managed the editing department at, um, a software company here in town and so I am always rewriting and rewording and reworking things and so it's the same way with my cards like I'll design a card and then I'll come back to it and I'll make some changes and um I'm constantly editing and um and coming up with different ways to do something and so that that's why it takes me so long sometimes with my cards is because I'll, I'll make something and then I'll put it aside and then I'll come back to it and make some changes. Um, and I just do that over and over again with everything. Oh, I'm so glad you liked the Double Wonder. The Double Wonder card ideas, the layouts, and the template were all from Shannon West, who works for Stampin' Up! And so I just took her templates and created the handouts and the layouts. But that is her brainchild, the One Sheet Wonder, or the Double, the Double Wonder, her take on a One Sheet Wonder. Okay, Becky, you can stop the time. I finished assembling my snowflake cards. <laughs> Uh, I really like the way that these turned out. They're so fun. And I think I will. Um, it looks like... <laughs> oh my gosh, it looks like I sped up the camera. Except I was still talking at a normal pace. Let me show you the other... Um, the other variation, and I'm not going to do all four cards, but I'm just going to do um, one and show you 
what that would have looked like because this one was going to be a little more simple so um, if you're tuning in late with this little one sheet wonder we're using a six by six paper and you're going to cut it four inches and then turn that and cut um, into four pieces that are one and a half inches each I'll post a template I'll, I'll have to make up a little graphic and share and share the graphic so the four pieces and then the leftover piece you cut at four or f I'm sorry five and a quarter and then a little half inch strips okay so this is gonna make four different cards and then for the this embossing folder I used one from the mini catalog the poinsettia paper comes from the annual catalog. It's part of the flowers for every season. Let's see, where are the embossing folders? Right here. So this one is the wrapped in texture embossing folders. And there's two of them. They're skinny. One of them is dots like this. And the other one is like almost a basket weave. So that's on page nine of the mini catalog. And I just thought that it went well with the berries here in the poinsettia paper. So let's just do a quick glue down of these pieces. And you can see what the alternative is gonna look like. For this one, I was going to use the Banner Year stamp set, which is from the mini catalog and just do a simple stamp on the um, the punch out now this is one of my favorite um one of my favorite punches it's here it is called um label me lovely i'll put the link in the video description when we're all done um it came out in the spring catalog and i just love that it's a little bit different of a shape it's not um it's not all you know, it's not a circle, it's not a square, it's kind of just a fun, different label. So I'm stamping Banner Year. I picked the little holly and berries um, because they kind of are in this photo with the poinsettias. So let me just stamp a quick tag. I'm going to do Be Merry. And then this is, so Poppy Parade and Just Jade are the colors. in this paper really simple no die cutting here but I did get out a little bit of um, of the just jade ribbon and I thought maybe I would put that on here What do you think about that? So this one is not as elaborate but still fun and festive and quick and easy with this layout. You could add some, um, some rhinestones or some gems or something um, to that. There's a little bit of um, yellow in here, so we could get out like the holiday, the holiday rhinestones have some yellow rhinestones and then I almost think that's like too much though. Like, I don't think I like that. I'm gonna keep this one clean and simple because the other one has a lot on it. So this one's gonna be clean and simple. What do you guys think? Did you make cards or are you waiting until later? Oh, Janet, I'm so glad that you like this layout. 
I I had it all in my head and I didn't actually make a card until um I didn't actually make it until tonight when we were live, but I think it turned out pretty good. Um okay, so let me let me show you um really quick what we did tonight. So we did our little one sheet wonders, little little mini stamp a stack. We made a couple cards. So this was all about Christmas tonight. We made a couple cards with the curvy Christmas bundle. And then um that's it. I showed you the advent calendar. And some of the cards I made with the Wonders of the Season. So if you're interested in getting that kit, make sure to leave a comment so I can get in touch with you. But I'll be posting the link for that soon. Um, and then if you missed the video I shared yesterday, I, I want to show you really quick just a couple sneak peeks from the mini catalog. So this is the January through June 2021 um, mini catalog. This is coming out in January for customers, but demonstrators can order in December. And so in the video I shared yesterday, I shared some of the cards that I've made with these new products and so I just got a couple of them out to show you um, just all the fun things we've got some great products for making masculine cards and feminine cards we've got some cute little critters some beautiful simple um, simple products to make beautiful cards the dragonfly this was from on stage has been really popular you're seeing a lot of the dandy garden around but all these products are going to be in the mini catalog and if you haven't watched the video um, then make sure to check that out um, I'll post the link in the description so you can see it if you missed it. And if you want to get these products early, you can join my team um, and get instant access to view the PDF of the catalog and pre-order starting December 1st with a 20% discount. So if you're in the United States, you can join my Jubilant Stampers team all over the country. Uh, you'll get $125 in product for just $99 plus tax. Plus you get a free paper pumpkin kit with your starter kit as long, along with some business supplies like catalogs and order forms so that you can share Stampin' Up! with your friends and family. All right, guys, that is it for me today. Thanks so much for tuning in. Please share the cards that you made with your little mini one sheet wonder. I can't wait to see them. Uh, and thanks again for tuning in. I will see you next time for Thursday Night Stamp Therapy next Thursday at 7, 10 p.m. Central Time. Have a great week.